Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner and I'm with the SolidWorks Education Team. Welcome to another video in the SolidWorks Baja SAE video tutorial series. In this video, I'll be covering how to customize the SolidWorks interface. Specifically, I'll be covering how to edit and add toolbars, how to set keyboard shortcuts, how to set mouse gestures, and I'll be giving finally a brief overview of what macros are how to create them, and how to use third-party macros downloaded from 3D Content Central. I've opened up a part in the default SolidWorks interface. This is the interface that I use for almost all the videos, just to keep things simple, but you should definitely know there are lots of different ways to customize and change SolidWorks to fit your preferences. The first and simplest way is via the Command Manager and the Toolbar. The, the command manager is the bar located up top, and by right-clicking on it, I'll get a bunch of options for different tools and bars that I can add to this. I like to use the command manager for tutorials because it spells out in name all of the tools we can use, but unchecking command manager will revert me to the traditional toolbar format. As you become a more advanced user, this could be very beneficial and give you a lot more screen real estate to work with. Adding a new toolbar is as simple as right-clicking one of the existing toolbars and selecting the new toolbar I want to add. As you can see, Reference Geometry popped up over here. I can even pull it outside of the toolbar. And then I'm free to put it back in the toolbar and move it around as I please. If I right-click on the toolbar and then scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's also the option to customize, which brings up a window that will give us even more options. From here, I have all the same selections. I can either enable the command manager or disable it, add or remove toolbars, as well as even adding commands to specific toolbars. Taking a detour and looking at the tools menu, for example, if we go into sketch entities, we'll see that there are many more sketch entities that we can add to a sketch versus what's available by default in the toolbar. Adding one of these commands is as simple as dragging and dropping. If you go back to the customize menu and go to the commands tab, I can just select one of these buttons, for example if I wanted to add 3 point arc slot, and I can just drag it over to the sketch entities toolbar. The next way we can customize SolidWorks is by going over to the keyboard tab. Here we can set our own key bindings for shortcuts for commands and operations in SolidWorks. By default, SolidWorks does have a lot of shortcuts, and this is a great way to reference them, but you can see there are many commands that don't have shortcuts. One that doesn't have a shortcut by default is the measure command, which is one of my frequently most used commands. Here I've just searched for the command, pulled it up, and to add a keyboard shortcut, I just click on the empty space, and then just press the command like I normally would. For example, hold shift and press M. In this case though, I'm going to set the shortcut just to M. Since I use measure so often, I want to be able to have one-click access to it. Clicking OK, and it's now available. By just hitting M on the keyboard, it automatically executes the measure command, and all I have to do is click on the part that I want to measure. The next tab over is mouse gestures, which will be familiar to some users of Firefox and Google Chrome. Mouse gestures works exactly like the keyboard command. I can search for a command, and then I can apply a mouse gesture to it, either in part, assembly, drawing, or sketch. For example, I can assign the measure command in a part to holding the right mouse button and then moving to the left. The final and most advanced way to customize SolidWorks is to use macros. Macros are simply a series of command or actions in SolidWorks that we can string together into one single command. The first step is to add the macro toolbar by right-clicking and selecting macro. And just to give you an example of how this works, let's press play and run through this macro I've already created called cylinder. You can see it happens very quick, but this is basically creating a cylinder in a blank part for us. It starts at the origin, creates the circle, now it's going to stop to ask me what I want the dimension for the outside of the cylinder to be. Once I confirm the dimension, it completes the cylinder. This example isn't particularly difficult, but you can see how we might be able to simplify very complex tasks. 
There are two ways to create macros. One is to record some ourselves, where we actually just go through the actions, and SolidWorks records everything that we do, and we can play it back as a macro. We can also create our own using the SolidWorks API and actually programming our own macro. I'll go ahead and open the cylinder macro so you can see what the program actually looks like. It will open it up in Microsoft Visual Basic Editor, and here you can actually see the programmatic instructions to the SolidWorks API. This is a very advanced way of creating macros and can get very complicated very quickly, but if you're familiar with Excel macros or creating other Visual Basic programs, this might be a good way to go. The last option is to access a supplied user library of macros available on 3D Content Central. For those of you that have never used 3D Content Central before, it's a great resource of user-supplied parts, assemblies, library features, blocks, and macros for SOLIDWORKS. If you search for Baja, you'll even see parts that have been uploaded by teams that have been tagged specifically for use in Baja SAE. In this case, though, I'm going to go to the Macros section of the site, where there's categories that have macros for different parts of SOLIDWORKS. There's a lot of different options here, shortcuts for simple things like creating a plane, as well as more complicated things like getting the configuration names for all the configurations in your active part and saving them into a text file. One particular macro I'm a big fan of is the units toggle macro. I've already downloaded this and placed it into my SOLIDWORKS installation folder and then the subfolder macros. Here you can see the cylinder macro I already had as well as a couple other ones. If I then run this macro, you'll see that my units have changed from inches to millimeters. The best part is that we can even assign macros to keyboard shortcuts. Going back to the Customize menu and the Keyboard tab, selecting from the drop-down Macros, I can see all the macros that I've used, and here I've already set Control, Shift, and U to run the Unit Toggle macro. Now, when I press Control, Shift, U, I can instantly change back and forth between metric and English units. This saves a ton of time over the standard method of having to go in to Tools, Options, Document Properties, go to Units, and finally select the unit method I want to use. Instead, it's just simply bound to a keyboard shortcut. That concludes this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for future videos, please send them to sfalkner at solidworks.com.